Well, hello YouTube, it's time for another one of these weekly randomizers. I haven't even checked it to see what the sortie is, but I don't feel like there's much need for preamble. Okay, rescue radiation hazard grenier. Not too big of an issue, especially because, well, actually that vault can be a bit of an issue to rescue people from. You know, the wardens have pretty good lines of sight. I guess if I was to talk about anything, I would talk about the kit guns I've been making, but nothing really interesting to say about them yet because they're not even gilded at the moment. Uh, I've spent a few days playing some Monster Hunter rather than playing too much Warframe, so you know how it can be. Uh, what do we got here? Well, oh goody, I do get to show off my Act Magnus, and I better swap this Dark Dagger off of the ones I was selling into the one I like to use. Uh, and I've got my MOA again, so fantastic. Well, this sucker has been gilded. Uh, I've got, still got only the Whiplash Mine and the Anti-Grav Grenade. I do really like the mine on MOAs. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out the grenade into one of their defensive precepts, probably the one that's slowing down incoming projectile fire, and then I will run that and the mine as my MOA. We'll see, though. I haven't really been testing out the defensive precepts. It might be that the Stomp is actually more powerful than the AoE. I'm not sure yet. I'm just waiting to see what goes on. But I do like the mine because grouping enemies together is a really strong effect that lets you instantly clear a large group, which is I think is pretty cool. Uh, beyond that, of course, generic stuff. Tank mods, medaray, medikit because more goes well with the tank mods, animal instinct of vacuum, you know. Generic stuff. All right, so let's talk about Valkyr now. Now, what I've done for the longest time with my Valkyr is I've been playing Eternal War builds, essentially. I do really like Eternal War for being able to keep up the huge bonus to attack speed on Valkyr because no matter what you're doing with her, uh, chances are that you're going to want to use... You're going to want to be relying on melee weapons at some point. And one of the coolest things that Valkyr can do that very few other Warframes, I think Volt being the only major example I can think of, one of the cool things that Valkyr can do is she can give you a massive increase to your melee attack speed. And with Eternal War, that massive melee attack speed increase can not only buff your entire squad, but it can also last for something like five minutes on average before you finally ha have to uh, recast it, which I think is pretty cool. So what we're doing here to keep that Eternal War going is we're running Prem Continuity and Constitution to get lots of duration onto the build. Then we got Streamline here for some efficiency, just so I can have my uh, Hysteria also last longer because we want to have some efficiency in addition to duration to keep the channeling costs low. More importantly though, I'm running Streamline and instead of something like Fleeting Expertise so that I don't have to work around negative duration. Uh, inhibiting my bonus duration for Eternal War. And that's actually pretty important because Eternal War not only gives you up to double the base duration of Warcry, but also that two second increase scales with your power duration. So you want to make sure that your power duration is something like 200-ish percent so that you're getting up to four bonus seconds per kill. Because you're not, you have to be able to actually get a kill then every four seconds to get the... Uh, ability to last indefinitely. So that's the number one design decision that I've made there. Beyond that, we've got some intensifying power drift for increased ability strength so that you get more attack speed off the Eternal War. Hunter Adrenaline as a rage effect so that I can pay for my abilities just by damage I'm taking since Valkyr is extremely tanky, particularly with Vitality and Steel Fiber. Now, I've been thinking about swapping in the uh, Adaptation mod on instead of Steel Fiber, but the thing is just that uh, Valkyr does get an additive bonus to her armor when the uh, when the war cry is on, but by the same token, she also just gets such a massive quantity of armor from Steel Fiber itself that even with war cry off, I find her to still be exceptionally tanky with just Steel Fiber. So I feel like I, I can sacrifice some. I can sacrifice some tank stats when the ability is on to gain some tank stats when the ability is off at that point. Anyways, Steel Charge, of course. Uh, that's basically the only build I run in my Valkyr. Now, the other thing that people do... Yeah, Wordus. Now, the other thing that people do actually 
typically run on their Valkyrs that with Warcry is narrow-minded, just to make sure that the Warcry lasts for an insane duration. I find, however, that I dislike narrow-minded because it essentially makes her other two abilities, the Rip Line and the Paralysis, very, very hard to use. You know, it reduces the range on Rip Line from 70 meters down to about 30, which is significantly less powerful. And I do actually like to zip around on the map and take advantage of that mobility, which is why you see me using, which is why you see me using this build with just Constitution instead, which is obviously a bit of an odd choice since Valkyrie already has built-in knockdown recovery. Now, what else we got here? We have some Riven weapons. Actually, all three of these weapons I have a Riven on of uh, differing power levels, shall we say? Uh, my Glaxion, I actually love this five-star weapon Riven with damage and multi-shot. I feel like the Glaxion stands out to me as a weapon where getting a powerful Riven can change it from being a mediocre weapon into something actually incredible. And so let's talk, go ahead and talk about this, because I feel like out of all these weapons I have to talk about here today, the Glaxian is probably the most underrated. So what is it? It is a weapon that is a fast-firing beam weapon, does not have very much ammo efficiency, and if you look at the base damage on this sucker, because so I'll pull off all the mods just to show this off here. The base damage on this weapon is 26. It is extremely low. In the contender for probably one of the 10 lowest base damages in the game, I think it was right up there with the Amprex and the Soma until the uh, beam weapon update came out, and then it got its base damage buffed up a little bit. But even so, it's still extremely bad. And that stacks up with the fact that it's got almost no critical chance. But the weapon has a very high base status, as you can see here, 34%. And it's got a huge ribbon disposition again. And so what you can get out of this weapon is you can get a weapon with an extremely high status chance. And also you can take advantage of the fact that the base damage type on this weapon is cold to generate some, a, a unique combination of statuses with the corrosive and cold and whatnot that you won't see very many other weapons reaching 100% status on. Now, it's somewhat of a downside because of the fact that... Uh, you generally would want to combine corrosive damage with, say, uh, heat damage just to stack up those status effects for a bit longer. But the Galaxian with base cold damage can can have such a huge percentage of its damage being cold damage that you want a much higher percentage than you would see on any other weapon. Which is why you see me using Combustion Beam here in exchange for a final dual stat mod to go into... Um, to go into blast damage. And I find that to be pretty important too because of how the Galaxian already slows enemies as its beam is held onto them. So that you get, what ends up happening is that any cold proc stack with that slow and essentially freeze the enemy entirely in place. If you, It doesn't matter if you've held the beam on, long, on them long enough to apply the entire freeze effect that the Galaxian has. If you've procced cold and you've Proctoglexian slowing beam, the enemy is barely moving at all. Plus, like I said, we got combustion beam here as well. It's not a max combustion beam, but still, it causes enemies to explode, which gives the weapon uh, the ability to deal some area of effects. And then, like I said, once you throw on split chamber, serration, and a split chamber slash serration ribbon here, like I've got sitting around, or any ribbon that you find to be extremely effective. Again, this weapon can also make use of fire rate. It can also be making use of... Um, some bonus, uh, punch through even, things like that. Uh, there maybe even magazine size, you know. Uh, there obviously there are some other things that come to mind that you could potentially add to the weapon, but I just really am liking my uh, my raw damage driven here because the biggest weakness of the Glaxian is that it's it's elemental damage rather than physical damage, so you can't get slash procs, and it's got no crit and it's got very low base damage. Those three weaknesses are what you're playing around. By increasing the damage to obscene numbers, you get around that we those weaknesses by a lot. And you'll find that the we damage on this weapon is actually pretty good. 12, uh, 12 rounds a second, dealing 1,000 damage per round is in the tens of thousands of damage per second. And you've got 100%, well not quite 100%, but on beam weapons nowadays, it doesn't really matter whether you're at exactly 100%. That's another one reason why I'm not using a fourth dual stat here. <laughs> You've got close to 100% status chance per tick at a weapon that fires this fast. Yeah, and that's pretty crazy at destroying armor and just shredding through armor targets. You'll see it. You'll see it in game because I will be pulling out this black sin. Now, is it is it this Agmagnus? No, it's not because this Agmagnus is one of my favorite weapons. And yes, 
there's a huge Ak Vasto versus Ak Magnus fanboy debate going on right now. But the thing is, I don't have this kind of critical rhythm for my Ak Vasto. And so I have to come down on the side of the Magnus. Just because 104% critical chance on a weapon that has almost a 7 times critical multiplier with all the max prime bonds and this Ak Magnus rhythm is just nutty good. It's just nutty good. Of course, the rest of the build's pretty generic here. Damage, multi-shot, bit of extra fire rate. Not that I can necessarily fire quite that fast when I'm spam clicking with my mouse here, but you, if I ever throw it to the uh, rescue target, you'll see that come in incredibly handy. And then, of course, some corrosive damage because we have to have a little bit of elemental damage on here to make sure that there's more damage to multiply with the criticals. And as you can see, because it's a pistol and has so much multi-shot, the dual stat mods also still pump it up to a huge amount of stats chance. The Ak Magnus is indeed one of my favorite all-time weapons in all of Warframe. As if you go and look at my profile, I've got more hours logged with the Ak Magnus as my secondary than any other pistol. I have huge numbers of kills with this. I've owned it for a long, long time. Is is the primary reason I had Ak Magnus just about since well just about since I got this account it was within the first 20 or so weapons I crafted I would say maybe even within the first 10 I'm not sure but it was one of my favorites for a long time and I have not ever seen this weapon fall off <laughs> now we have a complete misfit of a weapon here I love the Reacted Dark Dagger I think it's one of the best stealth weapons in the game and Valkyrie is definitely not a stealthy frame. She is a frame that wants a weapon that can absolutely crush large groups of enemies at once. Something like a Galatine or a Polearm of some kind, or maybe even hammers if you lean that way, which I don't. But anyways, daggers, I think, are a bit underappreciated too, because people don't understand exactly how much bonus damage Covert Lethality applies to daggers. So just so that you're appreciating this here, Covert Lethality is giving plus 100 base attack damage to the weapon. In other words, when I throw the lethality on, it almost tri it's doubling to tripling the weapon's damage output, which is pretty crazy. Now, why do I think that the Dark Dagger is an insanely powerful weapon? Well, it's because of the fact that it's got this Dark Dagger augment here for the Blight effect, which causes the weapon to uh, restore energy whenever Blight goes off, because this is, you know, because because Blight restores energy and gives movement speed as its effect. And that not only is the movement speed useful, but it's also got the Dark Dagger's base effect because this is one of the only weapons that is a Syndicate weapon and also has a Syndicate augment. That is to say, um, for melee weapons, because all of the other Syndicate weapons in the primaries and secondaries have, their, have essentially an augment built in. Right, they give the blight effect or the whatever justice purity, whatever effect that is, that's built into the weapon. But the dark dagger, on um, the dark dagger, just like all the other syndicate melees, has a different effect from the uh, generic blight or whatever. It, in this case, the dark dagger's effect is that it gives you overshields and it uh, uh, it gives you overshields when striking an enemy that's been afflicted with radiation, and it also reduces enemy visibility when it's held, so you become if you're visible, if you would be visible to enemies for any reason, which you probably shouldn't be, but if you would be visible to enemies, the radius at which they will take, they will see you, they'll pick up aggro on you, is much reduced. And I'm going to quick organize that because I think it makes a little more sense to point out that I'm using some corrosive damage here in addition to some additional toxin damage. This ribbon here, as you can see, the disposition is pretty terrible. What I am, what I did want to roll it into was a ribbon that had some bonus damage on it, some toxin, and most importantly, attack speed. Because the number one thing to understand for daggers is that you should be using them for finishers primarily, and uh, because of the lethal damage on finishers with cohort lethality, and finisher animation speed will scale up somewhat with your attack speed. So you want to stack as much attack speed as possible. And I actually have a pretty good example of uh, that going pretty crazy if you look up here at the ceramic dagger which I have a 2.30 attack speed on because I also have a ribbon on this and this particular dagger has a 5 star disposition for attack speed. But regardless I feel like the Rekta dagger is still by far the strongest dagger in the game specifically because of its ability to um, not only have bonus stats because of being a cynical weapon but also have the augment effect there. Obviously, we also got Pride Pressure Point here, and then Condition Overload, just because Condition Overload, you know. 
the what dagger still is dealing 500 damage and attack and has a uh, reasonably not as terrible status chance as you might expect so you know you go with it you go with condition overload if you want to make the weapon pretty cool also worth noting that you can stack up status effects not only by auto attacking but also by procking the syndicate effect and that'll give a vir an AOE viral to all enemies, which will stack up another stack of condition overload. So uh, there's there's some logic behind that there, I think. Uh, last thing to show off is, of course, Valkyrie Talons. I know I've played Valkyrie before. I just felt like talking about her a little bit more. But I think the most important adaptation I'm running with here is the Gladiator Might here to combine with Organ Shatter for even in more increased critical damage. Uh, beyond that, Prime Fury and some corrosive damage here and then bonus combo duration because you can actually take advantage of combo duration combo duration if i can uh, not slur my words there you can take advantage of combo duration on exalted weapons uh now obviously the status of chance on this is not that great that's why we're going with the prime fever strike here but the critical stats are disgusting now the only other thing i think i would suggest thinking about for valkyrs with talents is that she would be a crazy Warframe to be using the Sacrificial mods on, but you're going to have to make some <laughs> sacrifices in the rest of the build because, just like every other Exalted weapon, you don't get 10 extra mod capacity off of a stance. So you're going to have to find a way to take this pressure point and this true steel and probably form it a few more times to get these other mods to actually fit in. It might have to lose a Fever Strike as well in exchange for a, what, a mod that would be just cheaper. Because I feel like there's no real way to stick with the Gladiator Might and still get the Sacrificial Pressure onto the weapon. At that point, the Sacrificial Steel is less damage than Pressure Point, even with the bonus effect. Or Sacrificial... Oh, crud, I got that backwards. Sacrificial Steel is, is critical, and Sacrificial Pressure is Pressure Point. Point being, even with the mod set bonus, Pressure is less damage, and Steel is... More crit, significantly more crit chance than true steel, but you'll be losing out on probably an entire mod in the process, which would be this gladiator might here. At that point, you're back. You're back losing out on the the critical statistics on the weapon somewhat. So I feel like it's fine without those mods equipped. Now let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and swap Valkyr over to what I normally play her on, which is Naramon, just because. I feel like the combo, the combo counter decaying rather than anything. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about this, I don't intend to go with my Dark Dagger as my primary, shall we say? I, I do need to finish this off. But no, I don't intend to go with the Dark Dagger as my uh, primary weapon here, so I probably shouldn't be doing that. Let's go ahead and swap it over to Naira, actually, for that Spines passive, so I can return most of the damage I'm taking back to the attackers. Just because I do intend to run with my primary and secondary weapon more than anything this run. And while Warcry and keeping that up forever would be fantastic, like I said, I don't feel like the Dark Dagger is going to get me there. So anyways, let's go ahead and listen to Let Krill having a seizure in the microphone or whatever there. <laughs> uh, delightful voice acting and get to rescue some people. And that also is a bit of a misfit since uh, we're not going to be doing very much that is stealthy. I need to turn that Search down. That is extremely and loud. And no I appear happens. to have accidentally equipped a dragon key in the process here. Well, that just happens. That just happens. We are on top of having a uh, an odd Warframe and an odd weapon build. We were also running this with a Dragon Key. Thankfully, it's one that's pretty irrelevant on Valkyr, but I mean, I guess that doesn't deal any damage now. The, the Paralysis, because that scales with the amount of shields that you spend. Whoopsie daisies. Alright, let's go ahead and show off this Galaxian. Just because I wanted to point off exactly how fast this can kill the enemies. As you can see, the damage there is pretty intense. For a weapon that people consider to be one of the... Well, I won't say one of the worst primaries in the game, because it's definitely not that. But it's certainly one of the most disappointing, I would say, since you have to spend so many resources to craft it. Oh, crud. Can I... I can probably, yeah, I can probably shoot the sandwich while I'm irradiated there. That would be so awkward. Uh... One of the cute things about Radiation Hazards 2 is that in mission types where having crowd control is kind of necessary, it becomes somewhat less of a problem. 
since the enemies tend to get irradiated and start shooting at each other for no obvious reason. I would say that this definitely qualifies under that set of circumstances. Uh, that is still too loud, my god. I don't know what is going on with that background noise there, that hurts. Also, my moment just almost died. And I myself am dying, so let's go ahead and hop onto Hysteria. No, Moa! Alright. As you can see, even though we don't have a fleet expertise or anything of the kind, we still have a ton of tank stats, or not a ton of tank stats, but a ton of channel efficiency there onto Hysteria. And even without the Warcry being applied, since I've been running without it for a little bit, Valkyr is still just incredibly tanky. 1700 or something ridiculous armor is just the kind of nutty amount of armor that w most Warframes want to have total, as opposed to just as their base stats. And it's one of the reasons why I feel like Valkyr is definitely a candidate to apply humble mods to if you like, like putting 7 form on her or something crazy. You know. Alright. Well. Let's, uh. Oh, good. I was gonna say, let's go ahead and uh, kill off all these suckers. Now, one thing that my Dark Dagger does not have is Life Strike, because one of the things that I find I don't. is a scenario that I don't need Life Strike in. Is when I'm playing as a. Let's go do that, why not? No, you. Murdered my. Murdered my sandwich. This thing is not taking damage, is it? Oh god. <laughs> what? I don't like these skates. Who else is shooting me here? Okay. Let's pull out the Magnus because I wanted to show off how good the Magnus is at actually murdering things that are just as immune, but I guess I'll just show off against some Greer instead since there's some Greer here now. Okay, he killed himself on the Unaira passive. This is why I feel like Unaira is one of the craziest tank setups in the game right now. There we go. That's a very high armored unit. That's taking a ton of damage. Uh, is there... A grenier here somewhere. Yes, there is. I just want to go into the rescue vault on full health if possible. Since there appears to be a large amount of radiation just outside here. So let's go ahead and pull up the Act Magnus just because I want to pop the wardens as best as I can. And since they're going to be most likely alerted along the way. And that is a change of plans. No, no, I knock you down the other way around. Gosh dang it. That's one of the first times I've ever seen that gravity well become particularly useful. I will like it. Well, number one thing is I have to hack extremely fast here, so I'll shut up. Shut up and take my hacking. And sandwich, shut up and take the aggro. Damn it! Yeah, I know you're in here. I know you're in here. Here you go. You can have Act Magnus. You can murder some things with that incredible fire rate. That huge critical chance. Here we go. Fire off a war cry for the sake of... Fire off a war cry, but I don't really want to go through there. I like going over the top instead. And just zipline our way out, because zipline's actually pretty good. With this build. Yada yada. Keep running with the Galaxion. Hostage seems to be fine, etc. Hello? Hello, you're gonna walk straight past me without seeing me there, sir. <laughs> Excuse me, I said good day, sir. Alright, forget it. Dark Dagger time. Had to show this weapon off sometime. It does still deal, as you can see, pretty crazy amounts of damage, considering how bad people like to think that daggers are. So have to be sure I don't accidentally kill the hostage in the process there. Also worth noting, one of the swipes in Homing Fane does have a built-in slash proc. Which I feel like is very much worth noting. Ah, I tried. Mailing those mailing those guys is just difficult. Alright, is this the exit tile? As you can see, oh, the 
Talon's... What, what's going on with the duration on Warcry there? Is Warcry not having the Eternal War proc on it? It turned off to that for a while. There is the energy restore that you would see on the uh, Rakta Dagger when you get an affinity, which I definitely got off of that. Um, should definitely got off of that uh, stealth kill, because these enemies here are unalerted for God knows why. Oh God. <laughs> Man, this is just such a beast of a weapon if you know what you're doing with it. Alrighty, let's just call that a day. Let's just go ahead and call that a day. That was sloppy and messy, but ultimately it wasn't that difficult either. First story mission, radiation is just not that big of an issue if you're going to solo things. Radiation is always the biggest issue if there is an objective like the rescue target, but with only one player, he doesn't get accidentally killed that often. You know. Alrighty, folks. That is going to be the randomizer for the day. Herp to derp out. <laughs> nice talking with you guys.